Hi everyone, this is Adam Tvardok from FontLab. Let's talk about FontLab 7. FontLab normally starts with like a very plain user interface uh, with a welcome screen. So with a welcome screen, you can open fonts that you had opened recently, and you can also create a new font very quickly. There's a, a collection of pre-made encodings, which is in this case, mostly European scripts, start a new font family. So I can say typo day, you can pick any name. Uh, you can also change it later, create new font. And that gives me the font window with some blank cells. We have a sidebar here, which I'll show a bit later. Here at the, at the bottom, you can control the, the, the size of these cells. So it's either a particular number of cells per line, so like 24 or 12. Um, that sort of depends on the characters that you have. And that keeps this number of cells fixed, regardless of whether you, you scale the, the font window. Or you can choose flex, and then you can basically zoom in and out more flexibly. You can also use keyboard shortcuts. So here in view zoom, there are keyboard shortcuts on the Mac. These are command uh, plus and command minus. So I can, I can use that. When you start FontLab, there are two additional help resources that you can use. One is when you open, when you click on help, you can open the help panel. And the help panel contains like really condensed, very short descriptions of whatever is active. Um, so this is like a mini user manual. And if if I if I want to create a new glyph, I can double click. And you can see that now. There is a new glyph. The A glyph has been added to the font. And uh, now we can see the placeholder glyph, but also the metrics. And, and that's that exists. These empty or hollow glyphs, that means that this is just like a filter, like an encoding uh, kind of plan um, that you may fill these cells, but they don't exist in the font. So right now we have one glyph in a font. I can here uh, switch to the index view, which really just shows me the font, uh, the glyphs that I have, or use a Unicode based filter. So I can pick a different um, section of Unicode and, and see uh, what's going on. Um, so I'm going to go back to encoding Latin simple. I will turn on help panel or that's shift F1 again. And now if I double click on the glyph cell, I got the glyph window or glyph tab open. So this is now I have the font window and I have a, a glyph window. And you can see that the help panel changes depending on the content. So when I'm in a glyph window, the contour tool is active and I get a description of everything that you can get uh, do uh, with the contour tool. So this is sort of context sensitive, the help panel, and you know it's useful to, to learn uh, to get yourself acquainted with. One other help asset, and that is quick help. You know that when you hover over um, some UI elements in most apps, you get these uh, these tooltips. Now, these tooltips are usually just very, very short, and they say, you know, this button show kerning, this button um, contour. It has some extra information, but it's still very short. When I turn on quick help, I get over any user interface element, I get a longer description. So this is kind of like a cheat sheet. And this tells you, for example, here, show kerning, 
if on applies the visual kerning when showing the text in the glyph window. So it gives you a bit more context and explains, you know, what it does. Okay, but this is, of course, not very useful when these balloons are, like, appearing all over the place. So probably you don't want to use quick help with the menu, but instead you can turn it off. And then when you uh, go over something, you can press, you can hold F1. Or if you're on a Mac, uh, sometimes you need to press the FN key in the corner and then F1. But when you hold it, it appears. When you release F1, it disappears. And these balloons are no longer there. So let's say eraser. Okay, I, I want to use the eraser tool. I can have the help panel. That's usually a bit longer. And I don't want necessarily to you know, have it on uh, open all the time. But if I want to use the eraser tool and, well, I... Okay, you remove points, simplify paths. How does it work exactly? Hold F1 and you get the extra information. It tells you, you know, what the different uh, keyboard modifiers do with the tool. When, I, when you press Shift F1, then you get the help panel with additional information. So this is kind of like, you know, we have the quick help, which is this hold F1. You can also tap F1, press it quickly, and then it, uh, these balloons are appearing all the time. When I tap F1 again, they should disappear. Um, but when I hold, that's temporary. This is really useful. Helps you kind of get along together, you know, with the video tutorials. So let's start drawing. Since I've already opened the Glyph tab, with the A glyph, I can use the pencil and just, you know, draw something very, very quickly. I can go back to the contour editing mode and, uh, you know, drag the handles and the points, the nodes. Now, if I want to switch between the different tools, you'll notice that when I go to the quick help contour tool, it says tap hold A. For pencil, it says top hold N. For eraser, for example, it says top hold 2. So there are two ways of switching between tools. One is you just tap the key. So for instance, let's say I want to delete this point. Let me make the points, the nodes a bit larger so they're easier to see. Let's say I want to delete this. Well, I could either click the eraser tool and then just click here, click here, and then I could click back. That's one way. Or I can tap the two key, click, click, and then tap A again to go back to the contour tool. Or, which is also even faster, let's say I'm, I'm editing this. I'm going to quickly remove this node. I hold to, click, release, and I'm back in the control tool. Again, the same as with the F1 for quick help. If you just hold a letter or digit uh, that is mapped to uh, one of the tools, it activates it temporarily. You can do something, release the key, and you're back in the previous tool. The other way of drawing would be with the Bezier tool. The, Be the Bezier tool, I can just click, click, click. I'm going to just do you know, a very kind of silly demo here, here with shift, I can constrain. And I got this, then I could also use the rectangle tool, tool which is the key I, so I can tap the I, draw the rectangle, and I have a very kind of rudimentary A. When I hold space, I temporarily get, you know, the glyph filled and everything else, all the other controls disappear. Uh, with space, I can also pan around, but this is also useful for preview. When I use view true fill, which is shift space, I can see the contour filled fully. 
but I can also work on the node. So this is kind of just like a slight uh, preview of the what's filled, what's not, but true fill shows you the letters fully black. Let's take a look at a different tool. Okay, now I've I've gone back to, to the font window. I've created the second glyph, B. I double-click this. I open the B. Well, of course, you don't have to edit the glyphs one by one. So, um, by the way, actually, by default, you would see this. I, I had to turn it off. So, you see a little view character placeholders. Until you, you start drawing, you will actually see a sort of pale placeholder so, so you know what you're supposed to draw. Well, we have the text tool. When I click the text tool, this changes into a little type uh, text editor, and I can type. So I can also type A, and I have this B where I didn't draw anything. I can press Escape or any other tool, and now I can, I've can i typed two glyphs. So I actually have two glyphs in the window. I can double-click on them to switch. I will uh, turn this off for, for a moment. Yep. So now I could... Um, adjust this to maybe be a bit taller, like the 700, which is the caps height. Now I could switch to this cliff, maybe uh, draw the rectangle again. Snap to... If you need some snapping and it's off, perhaps there is a view snap. Uh, you can use the menu here or... I can go to the view panels view, and that gives me a panel where I can quickly control all the different aspects of what I see um, on screen. And also here in this column, I can control what is snapping. So in this case, I would want to snap to the font dimensions, which are these lines, the caps height, the baseline, um, and I can draw a rectangle. And I can continue drawing, but before I do that, let's take a look at one more thing, which is quite important, and that is the coordinate system. So you can see that I have a ruler. If it's turned off, you can uh, turn it on view rulers. The glyphs are organized in units. So these are, you can think of them like um, pixels or points, but they aren't really pixels or points. The point is that there is one setting in file, font info, uh, family dimensions, units per M, and that number is the number of units that represents the current point size. Let's say I want to make a font which will have some letters at a particular size when I choose, let's say, point size 10. So point size 10 will correspond to 1,000 units. This I can turn on the coordinates to see this is 700 tall, which means the uppercase letters in this font will be exactly seven points tall at a 10 point font. So this is basically the number you set here. If I, if I had mm, this number set to 2000, then 2000 would correspond to 10 points. And therefore seven points, the drawing would need to be 1,400 units. So it's a, it's a conversion. The units in a font, that number, units per M, that M is then the point size. And the other thing is mostly fonts are drawn in integer coordinates. So every point can be either on the location one or two, three, but not in between. Font Lab actually allows you to work in high precision in fractional coordinates. You can make very fine adjustments to the shape of the glyphs, but when you export the font, at least into true type, those coordinates will be rounded to the nearest integer. You can preview that rounding by choosing contour coordinates preview rounding. And that sort of, that shows you like pixel perfect or unit perfect shape, but internally, these are still fractional coordinates. So when you scale up and down and rotate, the precision is still kept. But this is maybe still not what you want. Most type designers prefer to work in just integer coordinates. This rounding is happening immediately. 
So when you scale something down a lot and then up again, well, then you get distortions. But still, that's that's what most type designers do. And therefore, in font info, um, family dimensions, by default, the round coordinates is on. So in family dimensions for your particular font, round coordinates, if it's on, then, well, I've already drawn something. So these fractional coordinates are there. I can now click round. And now I won't be able to, to use these fractional high precision coordinates like you would work you know, in full pixels in Illustrator rather than uh, having something being at 2.3 pixels. So that's integer coordinates. And that's the most popular way of working. Let's take a look at, you know, how you can get some consistent drawing. I'll start maybe with an H. You, I could start with an uppercase I, but that's, you know, that's that doesn't give me the right amount of information. But H has like basic strokes, the the, the vertical and horizontal. By the way. I wanted to mention there is an encoding filter that we've done called drawing. And this is for Latin, for the Latin alphabet. This is kind of the sequence in which many type designers draw the letters. You know, they they if they start with lowercase, they do and lowercase n and an O and then some others. If they start with the uppercase, they do H, O, A, and so on. So this is kind of also like a little built-in, the, the, the sequence that you want uh, to go. So I've added the H, and now I'm, well, I'm supposed to, to draw it, right? So let's say I'll, I'll do the rectangle, and I'll just, I can see the, 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 the size here, 120. I can turn on view, show quick measurement, in preferences, quick measurement has several options. Um, let's turn them all on. Also everywhere. I put it to everywhere. So I get this. Okay, this is 120. That's a right. Now I can command click near a contour that selects the entire contour. I could also double click, command click, and on the contour, press alt and drag. So I'm gonna you know duplicate this. Now I have two contours. They're independent, right? Now you can see this rainbow. We'll get to the rainbow in a second. But one other way of doing this is I can command click, say copy element, and then paste new element. I'm going to switch to the element tool, which is the second arrow, which the V key. I'm going to move this. And now I have these two elements. When I double click of one of, one of them, I'm back in the control tool and now watch I'll, i'm going to press alt and drag this this also this created a new element but not linked actually what i should have done go to the element tool say copy element and then i should say paste element reference yeah that's what i should have done now you can see a little two refs i'm going to move it and now go back to the control tool and yep, now I, I can see that these elements are linked. They could exist in different glyphs or in the same glyph. So, you know, whenever I reuse that element as an element reference, um, anywhere I make these changes, I can make them the changes here. They're reflected everywhere. And now this, this rainbow here, this is the an additional element of the measurement, quick measurement, which you can turn it off, but it shows you how equal the stroke is. So let's say I'm gonna make this again a straight line, which I can do in several ways. I can click on one of the handles and hit backspace. And if I delete a handle from a curve segment, that makes it a line segment. Uh, or I could have used the two, the eraser, and clicked on that handle and now let's say, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm designing some a diagonal stroke and it's not really very easy, you know, to see, you know, is this really equal or not? Now with quick uh, measurement, you can see, you can, I can go here and I see this gradient 
So I can click this node and I can move it with cursor keys. And the moment it becomes equal, it means these are completely parallel. Uh, so you can get the sense of you know, the thickness uh, using this, this, this rainbow, or if you turn off the rainbow in uh, preferences, you can still get the numerical uh, readout. So, you know, you can measure, you can say, okay, here it's 123 and here it's 119. I guess you don't see it on the screen so well, but uh, yeah, you have to trust me. <laughs> but I'm going to uh, turn on the rainbow again so that it's easy to, to work this way. I've slammed at this, so that makes me think, okay, maybe I want to uh, develop a, um, an italic font, right? How much did I slant it? Well, there's the, the, the guides tool, or the G. I'm going to tap G, and now I can drag from here to here, and I see that this is 10.20 degrees. I can go to the font info, font dimensions. And I can say, okay, I'm going to make the italic angle 10.20 degrees. And now you can see that the side bearings here got slanted. You get slanted side bearings, so it's easier to work with because the, they follow the italic angle. It's possible to, to decide whether you know, the italic angle is used for the metrics and also for the grid or not. That you can turn it off in view italic angle. This is sort of... You know, this looks silly. I have this side bearing here, and I so so I could either position it manually or I can hit semicolon, which does a very quick automatic spacing uh, using a built-in built-in algorithm. So when you're working um, and you've just drawn something, just tap semicolon to get uh, quick uh, side bearings, which you can then improve. I'm going to create a new font, just draw straight. Okay, I'm going to do 132, copy, based element reference, drag it. Let's say I, I have the stroke and it's 132, and I want to use a similar thickness in another uh, glyph, but I don't want to really use this particular uh, rectangle, and I don't want to remember this number. Well, there's a way uh, to do it better. So now I have a particular stroke. Um, let me also draw some horizontal bar here, 97, let's say. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. This is good. This is, I had this element. You remember I did this element reference. So now I've drawn this inside that element, which means anything I draw inside the element, which is like a symbol in Illustrator, that also appears in all the other places where that element is used. I don't really want this, so I'm going to undo this. What I would need to do if I work with elements, which you don't necessarily have to do, this is just a, you know one way of working, I'm going to do element, new element, and now I, I, I draw this rectangle, so now I have two elements. These are element references, and this is a new element. I'm going to file font info. I'm going to the stems section of font info, and I click on this black heart or diamond button, and that adds some stems. Stems are the regular, the distances, typical distances for thicknesses, horizontal and vertical thicknesses. So 132 and 93, it measured the strokes that I've drawn. Very nice. Now I can click OK. And let's say I'm 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 gonna I want to draw an E, right? So I can go here. I could type my H here as well. So maybe H E. Go back here. Yeah, but I still I would need to copy something. But I what I could also do is I can turn view suggest stems now I'll, I'll turn on the rectangle and i start drawing and the moment i hit 132 i get a stem suggestion so i basically i get you know font lab knows that uh, one of the stems in my design had the thickness and it suggests that you know that rectangle you're drawing can can have exactly the same thickness as the other one that you had. And this also works, uh, should work here. So somewhere near here, I'm going to get the suggestion 
And it's, you know, this is guaranteed to have the same thickness, even though those are not related. These are not element references. These are just contours. So suggest stems is just a, you know, handy way to, to reuse if you enter, you know, more numbers yourself here, then basically FontLab will suggest these dis distances as you, as you draw. Command click near uh, a contour, Alt, move it here, do the same. And then maybe use the keyboard with shift. You can customize the distance in preferences. Okay, so this is tap semicolon to quickly auto space. The type design is about it's this interplay between, you know, making something regular and making something slightly irregular. And FontLab tries to help you in that. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon. <laughs>